Welcome to Oxygen Not Included DLC Spaced Out. My name is Nilo, so this is a short tutorial series on how to get started with the new Spaced Out DLC. Everything you know about the normal game has been changed and it's not so easy to figure it out. I spent a number of streams trying to figure out solutions and I want to share the findings I have with you in these short tutorials. There will initially be four tutorials, uh, these videos, dealing with the most important sort of core aspects of the game, water, power, food, and oxygen. These are recorded in early access, so of course things might be subject to change. What we're gonna do is just, we're gonna just fire the game up and take a look at it. You can see here already now, you can see the game is very different. We're now starting on a swampy planet, and that means everything is slightly different. New critters, new plants, new everything. Now, if you like this kind of video, these kind of tutorials, then hit the like button and also let me know in the comment section below what kind of additional uh, tutorials you'd like to see about the new Oxygen Not Included tutorial. No, DLC. And here we are in the game. This is, this is where I want to see if we find, yes we do, we do find these beautiful things. They will be the core of our troubles. This episode, as you can probably tell by the title and thumbnail, I hope, is about the power. Power is very difficult and very strange. And uh, while I talk a bit about it, we are going to just uh, have them dig out some things and then have them work on work on getting towards these slugs because that's what we want to do there and I'll just walk talk a bit about them while we're working here so in this uh, world that you're starting in you will not have oil so there's not gonna be any oil power. you will not have coal you will have very very little coal so coal power is not a thing you won't have hatches so you can't make coal so actually your power is extremely limited when you really get down to it and that means you are really getting stuck in the beginning with the manual power the manual generator that one and it's not very good but as soon as you start looking at these critters when it nighttime comes then you will see how awesome they actually are well you will think that they're awesome that's kind of one of the funny things is that what these do when they are wild they will at night they will just go to sleep and they will be actually a, a power plug hence the name a plug slug and they will generate 400 watts of power during the night time. When they are wild, if they are, if they are tamed, they will generate 1600. So it's, if you look at it, go like, wow, that's 400 watts of power for free. Well, the thing is the night time in this game is only one eighth of the whole cycle. So it's actually only each one is generating only 50 watts on average. And you will need batteries to store the power during the night time. So you really, it is this, oh, hello. That's, well, that's something that usually happens for me. At least I get water, oxygen up here. So what you're seeing, what you will see here as we approach the first nighttime cycle. Hey, I don't even know why we wanted to get down here. I just wanted to take a look at them just to see how they're working. Do we have any, wow, they don't have a lot of, I'm just going to build this just to give us some cobalt here to work with. There we go. So we want to see this as we close to the first cycle. They will be here. And if you actually have some power lines, they will try to sleep on the power lines. I don't think I can make the power lines before we actually get there. Oh, okay. Eating. Great. Awesome. Let's see. And... As we go to the mid night time, you'll see. Come on. And that's night time. Boom. There. I'll pause it. 300. That's not much. Usually they did give 400. Why are they only... Oh, this because they're hungry. They're hungry, so they don't generate as much power. And this one as well. Oh, that's not it. But you can now hook up power lines if I had power lines we can hook it up here but you can see how short of time it is that means this is your main source of power combined with the manual manual power generation and that's not enough so you're gonna have to make a farm for this and then you're going to need a lot of batteries in order to store the nighttime power whether you want to have them wild or domesticated 
that's up to you. I just found that having them wild is just not producing enough. While if you have them wild, well, if you look at their diets, then we get into another problem. Oh, wait, that's not how to do it. That's uh, that one. Plug slug. They eat metal. That sucks. <laughs> that sucks because that's not something you really want to have happening. And they excrete uh, hydrogen as well, which we will come back to. So well, let's jump forward in time just to take a look at the base in about 35 cycles in. So this is where where I've, I've made a setup for these that we can do that. So let's have a look at how I could potentially or you could potentially use them in an efficient way. And here we have a setup for the plug slugs. What I've done is I've dragged my heavy water wire through a wrench. If you look at the setup here, that's a wrench and it is 96 tiles, so it's maximum size. It can kick, it has seven critters in, which is also the maximum you want because if they drop an egg, then that will go up to eight. We, they are actually dropping some eggs. We have five in here. And if we just remember to speed things up along, what you can also see that they excrete hydrogen. They don't excrete a lot of hydrogen, but it's still something. So what you can do is try to collect that and get at, use that as a bit of an additional power. It's not gonna give you much power, but everything counts. The problem with the hydrogen, and this is also why I've done it like this, is that hydrogen is now an irritant, so it hurts their eyes if they walk around in hydrogen. So you really wanna get rid of it and not just have it floating around your base. As these are tamed, then they are much more efficient. We'll take a look at this. They are tamed and happy and all that stuff. That comes with a certain advantage and disadvantage. The advantage being, oh, this is an elderly one. Uh, the advantage is that they will produce a lot more power. They will produce 1600 watts of power. Or if you take that over at average, that's actually 200 watts of power. So each one of these slugs is about half as effective as a as a manual wheel running all the time. At this moment, this is the entire power I have. I have one of these that I don't want to use, but that's actually our power. So if you want to power your base in the early game using slugs, you really have to conserve power as much as possible and work towards the next tier of power in this base. So these are okay, and you can see that they're eating cobalt ore, and that's one of the key things I want to touch on. I did some testing and it looks like they consume 67 kilos per cycle. That is an insane amount of, of iron. So what do we have here? We have five of those. Well, let's call it six. That's 400 kilos of cobalt every cycle that disappears. Count about this one. So this is definitely not a long-term solution. And this is why you... Well, let me just... You can do tricks by keeping them underfed and only feeding them at certain intervals to just keep them starving it i don't like that way of doing it um you can obviously do it for sure and that will save a lot on this one i think the real solution is that you want to get out of this one as fast as possible so here i am i'm doing this and now you can see the power they generate 1600 they go up here i don't know why that one is so unhappy uh why is this one so unhappy it's elderly I don't know why, I maybe, I don't know why that one is, is so low. Um, but what the, normally they deliver 1600. And you can see how fast they feed, they fill up my batteries. They don't fill it up all the way. And then during the day, it actually just starts decreasing because this is all the battery power I have for the base. So let me reiterate, try to conserve power. There are some things that I can't do in this base, such as uh, desalination, because it's simply too power intensive for this part. Let's jump, jump forward and, and take a look at what do you do then? Because I was honestly, I was kind of frustrated with this one because these are very bad and it's just super unsustainable because it's it's taking our iron, uh, but you need to do it. It's a stage. You first, you get your, your manual generator, then you get these, but you want to get the ladder upwards as fast as possible. And that goes into the next and natural progression of power in this space. And here we are just a bit later in the game. And this is something that uh, I would highly recommend you working towards as soon as possible, solar power. Solar power is absolutely fantastic for a number of different reasons. First of all, normally solar power is limited by the fact that you have to build some awful <clears throat> or advanced automation at least to keep them protected from meteor showers. There are no meteor showers. So just build the solar panels, you're great. The second part is that solar panels usually use 
sand and the the classification thing and that's not actually necessary because you have these things around the base such as this you can look at this this is 25 kilos of glass so we can just take this and deconstruct it and that gives us more glass there are tons of these around the base also like glass tiles here and there just every time you find glass tiles deconstruct them because you want to have them also here nice amounts of glass tiles just get those get those over here take them out and use them there's some glass flooring as well we've taken out all of this this was also encapsulating glass and if i just look at how much glass i have in my base i have 4000 kilos and i've not produced a single thing this is purely scavenged and if i look at power solar panels they take 200 so i can make an absolute ton of these i can basically fill the entire surface with solar panels and what i've done is i've hooked it up to sort of my main power spine where i also hook up uh, the uh, the power, power slugs at this one i really want to transition out of power slugs and i don't really know how to um how to actually do that uh, because if you kill them then you can never get them back and they might actually be useful sometime later but on the other hand you really don't want to feed them 67 kilos of metal every cycle for each one you have so how to transition out of it i don't know Maybe an option is never to tame them and keep them wild and then just absolutely rush to solar panels. That could be an option and that might be an option I want to do in the future because solar panels are just that good. They deliver 380, 380 watts, which by the time you normally get it, it's very late game and then it's not very nice amounts. But at this game, stage of the game, 380 working 7 eighths of the cycle because they don't work at night. You can see they will shut off shortly. Then that is 333 on average during the day. And that means this here is 1000 watts of power consistently through the day, as long as you have a bit of batteries. And there we go, they shut down, but our batteries are still <clears throat> not good. Yeah, not great, not great. But you know, that's where these ones come in and start filling this one up. In this space is using a bit more power. We have some desalination, some sludge press. You have some other things that need a bit of power. So we are consuming the power. And at this point, I just want more solar panels. Just spam those solar panels. I would actually recommend in terms of power, try to make the plug slug face, plug slug face, damn those names, plug slug face as short as possible and go as fast as possible into solar panels because they're just, they're just so nice. There we go back up 1000 more than 1000 watts of power into the base 1000 watt of power is not much but it's it's free once you build it there's no maintenance there's no nothing so no uh, yeah so the trick i would say to managing power is to shorten your plug slug phase because it's very expensive and a bit cumbersome to to farm it and manage it and deal with the hydrogen that they extrude and get as fast as possible to, to solar so that is going to be basically how to get done with power in the early game. I was honestly also a bit frustrated by trying to figure out. I thought they could make the plug slug work, but it, um, upon sort of reflection, it just, it's a stepping stone and you want to have that stepping stone to be as short as possible. So I hope you have enjoyed this short tutorial and I will help you on your own first base in, in the new DLC. If you like it, hit the like button. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel or at least consider it. Uh, I will be gauging the interest on these kind of tutorials to see if I want to make more of these. And of course, if there are viewers, I'll make more tutorials like this. So thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And as always, stay effective.